hear part of an environmental science lecture about a large bird called the dodo, which is now extinct. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. One of the most famous cases of extinction is that of a bird known as the dodo. In fact, there's even a saying in English, as dead as the dodo, used to refer to something which no longer exists. But for many centuries, the dodo was alive and well, although it could only be found in one place, the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. It was a very large bird, about one metre tall, and over the centuries it had lost the ability to fly, but it survived happily under the trees that covered the island. Then, in the year 1507, the first Portuguese ships stopped at the island, the sailors were carrying spices back to Europe and found the island a convenient stopping place where they could stock up with food and water for the rest of the voyage, but they didn't settle on Mauritius. However, in 1638, the Dutch arrived and set up a colony there. These first human inhabitants of the island found the dodo birds a convenient source of meat, although not everyone liked the taste. It's hard to get an accurate description of what the dodo actually looked like. We do have some written records from sailors and a few pictures, but we don't know how reliable these are. The best-known picture is a Dutch painting in which the bird appears to be extremely fat but this may not be accurate. An Indian painting done at the same time shows a much thinner bird. Although attempts were made to preserve the bodies of some of the birds, no complete specimen survives. In the early 17th century, four dried parts of a bird were known to exist. Of these, three have disappeared so only one example of soft tissue from the dodo survives, a dodo head. Bones have also been found, but there's only one complete skeleton in existence. This single dodo skeleton has recently been the subject of scientific research, which suggests that many of the earlier beliefs about dodos may have been incorrect. For example, early accounts of the birds mention how slow and clumsy it was. But scientists now believe the birds' strong knee joints would have made it capable of movement which was not slow, but actually quite fast. In fact, one 17th century sailor wrote that he found the birds hard to catch. It's true that the dodo's small wings wouldn't have allowed it to leave the ground, but the scientists suggest that these were probably employed for balance while going over uneven ground. Another group of scientists carried out analysis of the dodo's skull. They found that the reports of the lack of intelligence of the dodo were not borne out by their research, which suggested the bird's brain was not small, 
but average in size. In fact, in relation to its body size, it was similar to that of the pigeon, which is known to be a highly intelligent bird. The researchers also found that the structure of the bird's skull suggested that one sense which was particularly well developed was that of smell. So the dodo may also have been particularly good at locating ripe fruit and other food in the island's thick vegetation. So it looks as if the dodo was better able to survive and defend itself than was originally believed. Yet, less than 200 years after Europeans first arrived on the island, they had become extinct. So what was the reason for this? For a long time, it was believed that the dodos were hunted to extinction. But scientists now believe the situation was more complicated than this. Another factor may have been the new species brought to the island by the sailors. These included dogs, which would have been a threat to the dodos, and also monkeys, which ate the fruit that was the main part of the dodo's diet. These were brought to the island deliberately. But the ships also brought another type of creature, rats, which came to land from the ships and rapidly overran the island. These upset the ecology of the island, not just the dodos, but other species too. However, they were a particular danger to the dodos because they consumed their eggs. And since each dodo only laid one at a time, this probably had a devastating effect on populations. However, we now think that probably the main cause of the bird's extinction was not the introduction of non-native species, but the introduction of agriculture. This meant that the forest that had once covered all the island and that had provided a perfect home for the dodo was cut down so that crops such as sugar could be grown. So, although the dodo had survived for thousands of years, suddenly it was gone. One of the most famous cases of extinction is that of a bird known as the dodo. In fact, there's even a saying in English, as dead as the dodo, used to refer to something which no longer exists. But for many centuries, the dodo was alive and well, although it could only be found in one place, the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. It was a very large bird, about one metre tall, and over the centuries it had lost the ability to fly, but it survived happily under the trees that covered the island. Then, in the year 1507, the first Portuguese ships stopped at the island. The sailors were carrying spices back to Europe and found the island a convenient stopping place where they could stock up with food and water for the rest of the voyage, but they didn't settle on Mauritius. However, in 1638, the Dutch arrived and set up a colony there. These first human inhabitants of the island found the dodo birds a convenient source of meat, although not everyone liked the taste. It's hard to get an accurate description of what the dodo actually looked like. We do have some written records from sailors and a few pictures, but we don't know how reliable these are. The best known picture is a Dutch painting in which the bird appears to be extremely fat, but this may not be accurate. An Indian painting done at the same time shows a much thinner bird. Although attempts were made to preserve the bodies of some of the birds, 
no complete specimen survives. In the early 17th century, four dried parts of a bird were known to exist. Of these, three have disappeared, so only one example of soft tissue from the dodo survives, a dodo head. Bones have also been found, but there's only one complete skeleton in existence. This single dodo skeleton has recently been the subject of scientific research which suggests that many of the earlier beliefs about dodos may have been incorrect. For example, early accounts of the birds mention how slow and clumsy it was, but scientists now believe the bird's strong knee joints would have made it capable of movement which was not slow but actually quite fast. In fact, one 17th century sailor wrote that he found the birds hard to catch. It's true that the dodo's small wings wouldn't have allowed it to leave the ground, but the scientists suggest that these were probably employed for balance while going over uneven ground. Another group of scientists carried out analysis of the dodo's skull. They found that the reports of the lack of intelligence of the dodo were not borne out by their research, which suggested the bird's brain was not small, but average in size. In fact, in relation to its body size, it was similar to that of the pigeon, which is known to be a highly intelligent bird. The researchers also found that the structure of the bird's skull suggested that one sense which was particularly well developed was that of smell. So the dodo may also have been particularly good at locating ripe fruit and other food in the island's thick vegetation. So it looks as if the dodo was better able to survive and defend itself than was originally believed. Yet, less than 200 years after Europeans first arrived on the island, they had become extinct. So what was the reason for this? For a long time it was believed that the dodos were hunted to extinction, but scientists now believe the situation was more complicated than this. Another factor may have been the new species brought to the island by the sailors. These included dogs, which would have been a threat to the dodos, and also monkeys, which ate the fruit that was the main part of the dodo's diet. These were brought to the island deliberately, but the ships also brought another type of creature, rats, which came to land from the ships and rapidly overran the island. These upset the ecology of the island, not just the dodos, but other species too. However, they were a particular danger to the dodos because they consumed their eggs. And since each dodo only laid one at a time, this probably had a devastating effect on populations. However, we now think that probably the main cause of the bird's extinction was not the introduction of non-native species, but the introduction of agriculture. This meant that the forest that had once covered all the island and that had provided a perfect home for the dodo was cut down so that crops such as sugar could be grown. So, although the dodo had survived for thousands of years, suddenly it was gone. Background If you're preparing to take the IELTS test, you're not alone. Over two million people all over the world take the test each year. A knowledge of English is increasingly important for people who want to enter the higher education or work in countries where English is the first language.
and IELTS is widely recognized by universities and colleges, professional bodies, employers, immigration authorities, and other government agencies. Academic and General Training Tests There are two versions of IELTS, Academic and General Training or GT. When you enroll, you can choose which version you want to take. You should take IELTS Academic if you want to study in higher education, for example, on an undergraduate or postgraduate course at a university where the teaching is in English. You should take the general training version if you intend to live and work in an English-speaking country and need to show the migration authorities that you have the required level of English. Your teacher can advise you on the version which is appropriate for you, or you can contact the organization you intend to apply to and find out which one they require. The test. There are four parts to the test, listening, reading, writing and speaking, and you must take them all. The total test time is 2 hours and 45 minutes. The tests of listening and speaking are the same for all candidates, but the tests of reading and writing are different depending on whether you chose the academic or general versions. You do the listening, reading and writing tests on the same day, and usually the speaking test is done a few days before or after the other components. Scoring IELTS assesses your language knowledge and skills and gives you a band score from 1 to 9 in each of the four parts of the test, and also an overall band score from 1 to 9 for the whole exam, which is an average of the scores for each part. There is no pass or fail in IELTS because the college, university, or organization you're applying to will tell you the band score you need to achieve. IELTS Band Scores Band 9, Expert User Has fully operational command of the language. Appropriate, accurate and fluent with complete understanding. Band 8, Very Good User Has fully operational command of the language with only occasional unsystematic inaccuracies and inappropriencies. Misunderstandings may occur in unfamiliar situations. Handles complex detailed argumentation well. Band 7, good user. Has operational command of the language, though with occasional inaccuracies, inappropriaces, and misunderstandings in some situations. Generally handles complex language well and understands detailed reasoning. Band 6, competent user has generally effective command of the language despite some inaccuracies, inappropriaces, and misunderstandings. Can use and understand fairly complex language, particularly in familiar situations. Band 5, Modest User Has partial command of the language, coping with overall meaning in most situations, though is likely to make many mistakes should be able to handle basic communication in own field. Band 4, Limited User Basic competence is limited to familiar situations. Has frequent problems in understanding and expression. Is not able to use complex language. Band 3, Extremely Limited User conveys and understands only general meaning in very familiar situations. Frequent breakdowns in communication occur. Band 2, Intermittent User No real communication is possible except for the most basic information using isolated words or short formulae in familiar situations and to meet immediate needs. Has great difficulty understanding spoken and written English. Band 1, Non-User Essentially has no ability to use the language beyond possibly a few isolated words. Band 0. Did not attempt the test no accessible information provided. 